All right, y'all. So welcome back to Conspiracy Theories along with Unexplained Mysteries of Ancient History. All right. This next video, we dive into Africa again, where they have this 12,000 year old statue that they seem to uncover. So we're going to check this out. If you're new, come on, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, join the family and hit that like button for more content. Let's see what's going on. There are many ancient relics strewn across our planet, which are unimaginably ancient. Hidden from inquisitive minds, often by a variety of factors, millennia of undergrowth, conspiratorial bodies, or even personal perceptions of historical truth. However, that there part. lay a far more interesting, far more inspiring tale resting just beneath the surface of this illusion, just waiting to flourish. Illusion? Previously, we covered some of the amazing discoveries made by a man known as Professor Potini. In particular, his extremely peculiar stone found in 1990 within a diamond mine in Sierra Leone within West Africa. It is known as the Sky Stone. Numerous specialists have yeah, analyzed the that. stone and concluded that it is somehow made of pure oxygen. With that right there, let me know. Bro, that had to come from space. That had to get here via something from outer space. It had to, man. It, it doesn't make sense otherwise to me, in my opinion. So, yeah. And, I, and I'm pretty sure they got others. That's the conspiracy theorist in me. I know they got others, and they're hoarding them somewhere. And phew, they got to be of immense value. The stone and concluded that it is somehow made of pure oxygen pure with a color oxygen. source which is, as yet, unknown. Unbeknownst to many, however, is that Professor Angelo Pitoni had many strings to his bow. He was a geologist, a botanist, discoverer of emerald mines, an expert in the precious stone lapis lazuli, along with many other talents. And although many perceive his sky stone as a defining discovery, and doesn't that seem weird? He's the expert in this field, and he was the one that just so happened to discover and find this. That just, come on, man. You don't get situations that line up that good. Come on. What makes him so special that he gets to find this when he's already an expert in that field? Uh, not buying. And although many perceive his sky stone as a defining discovery, we feel his actual defining discovery, his legacy left upon the unexplained mystery history of our planet, can be found elsewhere. He did in fact, during his lifetime of exploration, indeed discover something unique upon our planet. Something undoubtedly important, immensely ancient, and quite possibly, a last remaining remnant of an unimaginably old civilization which was once found upon the African continent found during his ventures deep within Sierra Leone, West Africa. The Lady of Mali. He examined the land at the foot of her mountainous form, and according to his calculations, the stone monument was indeed man-made and carved well over 12,000 years ago. Reaching an astonishing 1,500 meters in the air, it is an image of a woman's figure hewn from an entire face of Mount Lore predictably due to modern academia and the entrenched paradynamically cast spell upon many modern fields of study, the only explanation that can be ascertained for this clearly man-made, highly ancient artwork is that it is merely a coincidental, natural formation. In an interview with journalist Carmen Mikado, Pitoni explained that the statue is located to the north of the city of Conakry and close to the country's border with Mali. The geologist estimates the Lady of Mali to be some 20,000 years old. This concluded through the observations of displaced motions within a natural rockfall he found within the Lady's form. He also spoke of caves in the area, which contained mummies, guarded by the locals, who he claimed rumored of their, quote, Atlantean origins. Unfortunately, Professor Potini died in 2009. So any other invaluable information he may have acquired regarding the area went to the grave with him. However, the Lady of Mali remains- I can see it, bro. I can't unsee it now. That's the problem. But I want to so badly call it just pareidolia. You know what I'm saying? But 
I'd be lying to you if I say, oh, I don't see this. Uh, it's not, nah, I'm honest with you. I can see it. I, I definitely can see it. You know what I mean? That's just, wow. Area went to the- That could be, it's one heck of a coincidence. It could be, that's what it is, but wow, still. The other invaluable information he may have acquired regarding the area went to the grave with him. However, the Lady of Mali remains and will undoubtedly live on for many years to come. Just who could have built the Lady of Mali? Is she really a 12,000-year-old relic left by a pre-flood, pre-cataclysmic civilization, or merely a natural formation? Do you believe an opinion based on a historical a assumption? or one based upon explorations, investigations, resulting in unexplained physical artifacts. We will let you decide. I think that's more so natural. Look at, let me go back. Let's see, can I get a good shot? Right here. I think that's more so natural, man. It just happened like that, I think. Now, is that a sign? Depending on different civilizations, they probably looked at that as a sign. So, but in these modern times, most people are going to look at that and just see that as, man, that just naturally formed like that. And that's pretty cool. Back then, that's, that probably was, they seen that otherwise. They looked at that as a sign, maybe from the most high. And they could have worshipped that. Pretty interesting though, right? Or one based upon explorations, investigations, resulting in unexplained physical artifacts. We will let you decide. It's that illusion they was talking about earlier. Illusion. We have in the past postulated that their tentacles span further than Australia. I think it's pretty interesting that even with all these discoveries, we still have a tremendous amount of skeptics, you know? And that just makes me think that people just, they wake up every day and just live to just go against something, you know, shoot it down, just be optimistic about every single thing and just be like opposing on the other side of it. No, that can't be real. No, like, they're wired that way, I just think. And it's not about the, I just think it's that per, the people who are like that. It's interesting to see that constantly have, just continue to be just skeptics like that, man. The proof is in a lot of these discoveries. What more do you need? They were able to make that. It's 
just as the beetle pushes dung, the Capri pushes the sun across the sky throughout the day, worshiping it as the dawn sun. thousand year old glyphs in India. The art is just wow. It is said to that they believe the, that the beetle renewed the sun every day before pushing it into the dawn sky. In the past, we have covered many ancient anomalies, out-of-place artifacts, and unexplainable features, all hinting at an ancient high technology which ancient man once possessed, an ability to create tremendous heat and thus advanced metallurgy, and in some cases seemingly turning stone to magma, a knowledge and technology which at some point within history became lost. One upart in particular is the slab of Beit Sharim, an enormous glass slab dated at many thousands of years old. Yet to have created such an enormous piece of ancient glass would have taken incredible heat in an incredibly large furnace. Coincidentally, all sharing an inexplicable similarity with the collection of artifacts which are the focus of this video. Discovered in 2019 on Melbourne Beach, off the coast of Florida, a total of seven artifacts, including the ancient Peruvian death mask, were found. After detailed analysis, the composition of metals used in the manufacture of the artifacts have baffled scientists. Created Listen, man, I'm, I'm interested in, in the discoveries as much as the next person, but discovering a death mask? A death mask. I don't want no parts of that. That just... I know he breezed over that, but that kind of stuck with me a little bit because I envisioned myself being out there sometime amongst a lot of these archaeologists and scientists and doing all these discoveries and being amongst them. But being that person that discovers a death mask, though, that would be that would be it. My career would be over. I'm done at that point. Why me? Used in the manufacture of the artifacts have baffled scientists. Created using copper, gold, and silver, Yet what stunned those investigating the items was the presence of iridium. Not only is iridium incredibly rare on Earth, with most found within meteorites, but its melting point is also yet another mystery. For as how the Inca apparently created them, if indeed the Inca were responsible in the first place, is yet to be explained. Dated at over 12,000 years ago, some of the artifacts clearly depict known Incan gods, one of which being Viracocha. Whether these beliefs were merely adopted, like the many unexplainable ruins we regularly cover, and claim were merely re-inhabited is unknown. Yet what we do know is that the melting point of Iridium, 2446 degrees Celsius, thus any artifact dated to these tremendous ages yet created with such tremendous temperatures, furnaces and metallurgies claimed as undiscovered during or prior to their claimed eras or ages of construction, mean that they simply shouldn't exist, yet they do. The question is how? How did the Inca acquire such rare elements? How did they manage to accomplish such temperatures and work the metals at such an early age within known history? we find their possible true origins highly compelling. Huh? 
It says, since the artifacts claim discovery and subsequent media coverage, the academics responsible for investigating the artifacts, metallurgy, and indeed date of creation have publicly redacted their uh, professional opinions, claiming that so-called Upart is nothing more than a fake. Those involved in the artifacts preservations have stated that they will fight this character assassination. They are all currently awaiting the results from further professional investigations. We will keep you posted. Like, wow. Why would they do that, though? That's like I say all the time. A lot of these scientists, when they make such bold statements and different things and, and go out a limb, on a limb to, to support different findings and facts that support these findings, you putting your career and credibility on the line, you know? So that's what that's the part that gets me like. People live to character assassinate you now. I feel like they love to do that more than to, than to be on the discovery side. They just wait for you to discover it so they can character assassinate you. Why is that? Why is that? It was just like I was talking about earlier, man. I don't understand that part. But it seems to be like the new wave, the new thing to do. Or maybe it's not the new thing. And maybe it's just... It's been around the entire time, and I just never really paid attention to it until now with me looking into this stuff. But I don't know, man. But even back to, like, the, the lady, the Molly that was found. Wasn't that crazy, though? I would definitely want to want to go see that and, and see do you feel like certain energies being amongst that, that stone. That, that I want I would I would love to be around that and see what type of energy you feel from it. I don't know. What y'all think? Y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what y'all thought about this. Super, super interesting though. We'll see what they say or continue to to make way about it. We'll see. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and stick around and stay tuned until next one I'm gone. Peace.